What's going on guys, Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. Basically, hanging out with the bar top, gonna make a quick video looking at the audio on this one and how we set this one up. Boom shakalaka! So I just wanna make a quick video on audio. Um, I'm trying to finalize this thing, just at least trying to get the major details down. Uh, basically, trying to figure out the audio situation. So again, we are doing Z313s. Uh, the last video as you saw, I did have, um, I'm gonna hold down hyperspin. Uh, I did have like the speakers installed, but I didn't have the subwoofer put in yet. So basically, we modified the subwoofer, took out the enclosure on it, and now basically I kind of compacted it to make it fit. I'm thinking about putting the subwoofer right here, right on the top. It fits perfectly, the door right now, I do have it in like test mode, meaning that I do have a bunch of wires coming out the side door. Not really set correctly, we're gonna be putting a power strip somewhere in this area, the power strip. In reality, the subwoofer I have to put up here. It has to be up here, only because there's no room down here. The PC's here. Um, from my previous builds, it's very difficult to put. I usually put the subwoofer here, but you got a PC now running in this. I could aim for here, but I really don't want to do that. Um, basically, again, real quick, just to look at it, I, I separated these more so these are wider. Basically, this right here is gonna just sit right inside of here. The door will be closable. I was doing an audio test for the subwoofer. So I do think that once I actually get it screwed in and mounted to this shelf, I don't think it's gonna have any issues. I think it fits perfectly. That's the only best way to do it. I did put the marquee up. Again, this will kind of sit kind of like that. It won't be in the way of the marquee. It won't be in the way of the lighting. So just to real quick give you an update as far as the audio, I'm gonna probably drill it in just to give it a test drill. Maybe just kind of double edge tape it just to test it. But real quick, Again, checking out our hyper spin build. The computer did come, again, I'm gonna fix up the wiring. This is not gonna look like this when we give it out. I'm gonna fix up the wiring. We're gonna put our Zinmo nicely on the control panel. But real quick, the Optiplex comes with this additional USB-like extender. Get it in focus. It comes with this. I don't know if I'm gonna keep that there because it is kind of blocking and interfering. Um, again, real quick. As you can see, I could flip this button so it doesn't really touch the hard drive, but right now we are able to play with it. We are able to close the lid. Somebody wanted to see a video. I could show you real quick. Somebody wanted to see a video as far as like how everything launches. Keep in mind again, it is hyperspin, so everything launches within hyperspin. Um, I do have my hard drive plugged in. PS2 might take quick to load, but I, again, PS2, you do need actual Xbox 360 controllers to work it. So yes, it is reading my drive. I always love to do Grand Theft Auto. Got some Tony Hawk. Gonna go into G. Somebody wanted to see it. Uh, I forgot the gentleman's name. We were messaging before. Just to see it. Let's do like God of War, just for the heck of it. I did not, co I, I'm gonna be honest, so I did not configure the emulator on this PC. This is a fresh install, so this may or may not boot. I'm not too sure. I didn't, I didn't mess up. I didn't play with the emulator settings and the video settings, so this may or may not boot. I think it did not boot. I don't think it booted. But yes, I was right, it did boot. Um, however, I do have to play with the settings. I did not fix the settings on this, so it's not really gonna load up. So again, you basically would be able to load up and you would you know, exit out. You would be able to come back into the menu and then just go into another game. And it's just an easy load like that. Again, this is a fresh install. So these may or may not work on camera. We are gonna do another video for the guy. Um, but just to show you real quick, like, let's do a Grand Theft Auto, Vice City. Again, I'm not too sure if this is gonna load up. Nope, oh, this one loaded, okay. So again, this normally, like this is PSP, so I could set this up to be the arcade sticks. I doubt I have it set up like that. Um, but basically, again, you load up the game, you play with your game and all that. Again, this is PSP. Um, this, no, I don't have my buns configured. I really have it configured to the Xbox 360 controller. Um, basically, on the controller, there is an escape button, which I use as the left thumb button, 
or right now because we do have the Zinmo, I just press escape and now we're back. So again, you could do anything. So the guy wanted to see multiple systems being launched. So let's do Sega Genesis. Again, I'm doing this right now, like literally not even testing this beforehand. So as you can see, the PS2 kind of failed on me. Loading up the Genesis. See that new emulator loads up. The point of these bar tops is that you shouldn't need a keyboard and a mouse. So we do want it to all work out. This I believe will work, yes, see? I do have my Sega Genesis connected to the arcade sticks. So we're good here. Basically again, if you're bored and you're tired of playing, again, I usually have my screen set to um, stretch. I do like to use utilize the entire screen. So the screen is stretched right now. Let's see if we could throw a Hadouken. This right now is the Sega Genesis version of Street Fighter. I'm kind of just one-handed. <laughs> there it is, see that? Now you get bored, my exit button, Brings me back to hyperspin. There we go. I had to actually do that twice. I'm not going to lie to it. Again, I have to kind of configure it. Basically, now if you wanted to do another one, I'm just doing ones that I know will work. Uh, let's do arcade. I'm going to let that load. Super Street Fighter Turbo 2. One button press. Loads up. This again, we have a, sometimes you get little warnings like, hey, there's something with the audio to it. I can have my speakers off right now. Basically, again, we're going to do coins, play it. And again, you could play it. We're all good to go. You get bored and then you escape out. That button is set to escape on the keyboard. Escape is set. All the emulators are known to escape. You have to program each emulator and all that. So uh, Super Nintendo. Did we do Super Nintendo before? I don't think I did. Street Fighter, I always do as my test ones. Again, I did not rehearse this beforehand some of the there you go so this one loaded this one loaded it's perfectly fine again we do have this set up to read the arcade sticks and the xbox 360 controllers so as you can see i'm doing it this right now is not like you have to program this this isn't something that you just copy and paste it you have to actually sit on the emulator and then fix up the settings so again real quick on this as you can see though real quick let me try to throw a hadouken if i can there it is. As you can see though, the emulation, again, this is set to stretch. So this is really, it could be set to a four by three. Again, escape, and we're back to hyperspin. You guys wanna do an NES game, let's load up maybe Super Mario. I have Super Mario 3. Again, it's all about how you have hyperspin configured and how you have your emulator configured. You need to configure your emulator to escape. Not just hyperspin, your emulator also needs to be configured to escape. So right now, again, we have an uh, NES. This is the NES right now. Literally playing some Super Mario Bros. 3. Some of the games, you got to remember that they use the start button to start or they use the A, B, and C button. So this right here. There we go. I'm trying to do this one-handed. Same thing. You get bored. Now, these really for, super, for NES, this is regular A and B. And then this is turbo. So you could just kind of hold it down to do turbo. Again, you get bored, you hit exit. The emulator will exit. Again, there you go. Bring it back. The mouse really wouldn't be there. It's only because I went and put the Windows button before. But again, real uh, somebody want, he wanted to see what else. He wanted to see N64. I'll show you N64 real quick. N64 though, keep in mind, that is configured to be with controllers. You can't use the arcade sticks for this. So Super Mario 64. One button press, this will load up Project 64. Sometimes, yep, you see you get like a little pop-up window. You got your beautiful Super Mario 64. This again, same thing, it's set up to exit out. This right now, I don't have this emulator set to, to full screen. So as you can see, we do have a four by three running on this. Mario looks amazing. Exit out, and now we're back. Again, flawless, that's what you wanna do. Um, if he wants to know, let's say you exited N64 and you wanna load up a different N64 game, Project 64 used to give me that issue until I figured out how to program it. And now we're into a different N64 game. So you don't have to restart and all that. Again, we could set up the emulator. I usually will. I will fix this to be full screen on this. We get bored of this. Um, maybe when it, the GameCube, um, let's try it real quick. The GameCube, I know for a fact, um, it is a ROM. It is a CD. So it's going to take a second to extract it. Um, let's do a popular one. Um, where is it? Oh, just Luigi's Mansion. You can't go wrong with Luigi's Mansion. One button press. This one is really a ROM. Let's just see how it is. Okay, not too bad. It's actually going pretty fast. 
on my laptop builds it does take a little bit of a second so this really is extracting or going through the zip file to load up this gamecube game so i believe it's the i think it's the gamecube and i think it's either ps1 um that will do this where you need to load it or a dreamcast game i forgot it's it's only two systems out of that only because there's so much data and it's zipped to save room on the hard drive you zip the rom so right now i'm going six minutes into <laughs> going through it but i'm gonna just let this rock i don't want to actually stop it just so you guys can kind of see it we're gonna make a couple of videos side by side laptop working and all that so we're gonna do a couple of videos um even with a pc you do have to kind of wait for a couple of these games but again this is an, a nintendo gamecube game i know for a fact that gamecubes will always need to do this where they load up the game before or behind the scenes um other than that again real quick we we're just looking at the audio you know i'm gonna try to mount this only because if you guys have any suggestions for the audio let me know but with this little stand that it came with it is elevating the subwoofer off so the base isn't being blocked or covered let's check this out real quick i have the audio low let me bump it up a little bit again luigi's mansion full screen dolphin on this one. Oh, so possibly it is actually this one's reading off of my arcade sticks on this but it really could be a uh keyboard that i did use look at this we are actually playing luigi's mansion with the arcade sticks <laughs> look at this amazing stuff i mean a bar top pc bar top budget beast running some classic luigi's mansion again i know for a fact that it's not going to work all of it i probably have some of these configured some of the main buttons but luigi's mansion for example needed the c stick um, which is the bottom right stick so you know keep in mind you might be able to play some games but you're not going to be able to play them fully to the extent um basically i'm just gonna let this cutscene go i'm gonna cut the camera real quick only to save the memory and we're back again kind of just loading up some of this luigi's mansion uh, i'm gonna see actually while we do this i'm gonna load up my youtube comment let's see who wrote to me because again i do answer your comments guys and i enjoy the comments Let's see real quick what the gentleman's name was. John. This this one's going right out to John. I'm going to make this into John. What did he want to see? Da, 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 da. Let me see what he wanted to see exactly. Actually, no, it is. Is it going to John? Would you do a video? Okay. He wanted to see a PS2 game. For example, Need for Speed Underground. Real quick. Check this out. Let's see. Oh, we could look at this. We're moving Luigi. I got my pause button. What else we got here? See, now we're stuck. Pause button is like A. See, that's what it is. These are wrong. But in all honesty, GameCube, we want with the controller. I'm bored. We exit out. That's how we do it. You want to go into some PS2 Need for Speed. Let's check it out real quick. We got the PS2. We're going to press Enter. Hold down the stick to the right or the left to bring this up. We're going to bring up some Need for Speed. So N... So now, real quick, this is another video I'm going to make. So, for example, on my PS2, I do not have Need for Speed Underground. Only because PS2 ROMs are bigger than the GameCube. So, check it out. If you remember, Need for Speed was on the GameCube. So, I'm going to bring it up here. We're going to go to N. And now, I'm very sure I have Need for Speed Underground on this. I should also have Need for Speed Underground 2 on this. Again, I'm going to have to look through everything. But... He wants to see Need for Speed on the ground. One button press. Again, it is a GameCube. So, oh, that's going kind of fast. Let's see if Need for Speed Underground will load up. I know for a fact I have Need for Speed Underground 2 on it. Again, this right now, I didn't test it. I always try to look up and test my stuff before definitely going to a customer. But real quick, this one's kind of loading up pretty fast. I mean, we're at 90% done on this. We got our dolphin. We got our Need for Speed on the ground running on this 2003. I know for a fact I have Need for Speed on the ground too on this. Again, amazing stuff. I'm gonna boost up the volume. Camera pointed away from the screen is pointing to me. This is classic stuff. I'm gonna press enter on this. Let's see if we could start. Old school. <laughs> 
And as you can see again, we have our base here. Again, I have it here, just lying against it. See, I don't, I have to configure it. It's really for a joystick on this. We get bored, we exit out. Let's see real quick. I know I have underground two somewhere. That's where, again, we have to always check them, double check them. Need for speed, hot pursuit, undercover. I know I have it somewhere. I'm not seeing it. I'm not, I have underground two. I know for sure I was playing it. So again, just kind of making a quick video. Somebody asked for it just to check it out. PlayStation one games. Let's load this up real quick. Um, playing some, maybe some Grand Theft Auto. PlayStation one, I just like got it to work good. Uh, the emulator for it was a pain in the ass to deal with. Let me just lower this. Loading complete. Again, PlayStation 1, quick load on this. That was the biggest pain with this emulator is to get this thing to read and, you know, let's see if it works or not. It should work. Again, didn't test this beforehand and yep, there we go. There you go, guys. And again, same thing, when you're bored, you exit out. On the Xbox 360 controller, there is a button on it to exit out. So you don't need the keyboard, you don't need all that. Just again, real quick, taking a look at everything, guys. Awesome stuff. Keep the comments coming. If we are done, I could set this up to once you exit, it will shut down the computer. I know we don't like to do that just in case you have to go to the back end. But real quick, there you have it. Game Case Arcades, Vic VP.